Hi everybody, welcome. How do I convince my partner for me to homeschool our child? This question comes up regularly in the homeschooling groups, probably at least once a month. And my first response to this is always, you don't. <laughs> you don't, because nobody wants to be talked into or convinced about anything, especially when it comes to something as precious as their child. And so we need to reframe this a little bit and really just have a conversation, just the same as we would on any other topic. We're gonna buy a new car, we're gonna buy a new house, we're gonna, anything, all the big decisions. It's a conversation between two reasonable adults, right? So, the first thing that I did when uh, home, the idea of homeschooling appealed to me was I went to my partner and I scheduled a time that we could have a conversation. I just said, hey, partner. <laughs> I just said, um, you know, it, I'd like us to set up a time where we can sit down and have a conversation about a topic that's really important to me and I just need to have your undivided attention. This is not anything relationship ending by any means. But just let them know that it's a serious topic and you want to be taken seriously and heard on this. And, and so I think that that's, that is where I started this conversation with my partner. And then I presented why, what I thought was a good idea. I think homeschooling our daughter would be an amazing experience and I really want to do this. And here's why. And I gave him two or three reasons why. And I included the, some of the sources that I used. Again, not a laundry list, but maybe two or three of the books I read, or I don't remember exactly what it was, but two or three of the books I read, or films that I watched, or videos I watched, or podcasts I listened to. Um, I think those were my primary sources. And, um, and, then, and then I listen. I have to listen because now I'm, I'm passing the conversation back to him. So I would say, um, so these are, my, this, these are my thoughts, this is my sources of information, and so what do you think? And I'm not gonna interrupt, I'm not gonna tell him why what he thinks is wrong. He needs to be heard, the same as he heard me, now I need to hear him. He may be 100% for it, I don't know. Mine, mine was. My partner was like, yeah, that sounds amazing. Let's do it. Boom, we're in. It was really easy. And, and that happens. It's not always a, a, an unagreeable topic. Um, but, it, but if they're full of concerns and fears, those are valid. And so validate them. Hear what, I, I, I would need to hear what he's saying if those were his, his concerns. And so the formulaic way of listening empathetic to somebody and to validate their feelings is I hear how you feel I understand how you feel I felt that way too if it's true I felt that way too but I have found through talking with members of the homeschooling community that wasn't that their experience I have found through the TED talks that kids are academically ahead in homeschooling, generally speaking. I have, or whatever. I'm not, I'm not gonna write a script for you because I don't know your scenario. I'm just sharing that these are the tools that you can use to effectively communicate. So definitely responding empathetically and then uh, sharing those feelings back with my partner and then, ex and then sharing um, how I have done research on exactly those topics is really valuable. Then, if my partner at this point was open, hopefully they're open at this point, to doing a little bit of their own learning, right? Doing a little bit of their own research. And so, if you haven't already suggested uh, some of your most influential sources of information about homeschooling, then this is the time to do that. Look, I, I, I hear what you're saying and 
Maybe if you did some reading on your own, if books are their preferred thing, or watch this movie. This, this movie was amazing. I, can we watch it together? Would be really good. Can we watch this video by Sir Ken Robinson together and talk about it afterward? Can we listen to this podcast from Pan Laricia uh, about unschooling? Can we listen to it together and then talk about it? These can be relationship building exercises. So definitely want to do things like that. If you're in a local homeschool group, such as on Facebook, and they offer any kind of a family event where the dads are going to be there, definitely ask if you can join in. Because when men talk to men, it changes everything. I don't know what this is, but <laughs> sometimes men just need to talk with other men about man stuff. And, and it could be, you know, if my wife is the one taking care of the kids and she's the one that's now educating them, what's my role in all of this? And the other dads can go, oh, you get to go on these amazing camping trips and you can participate in these excursions and, and you can do your own projects with the kids on the weekends or, you know, whatever. I mean, there's a laundry list of ways that both partners contribute to homeschooling. It's not all one-sided. It's not, it's not breastfeeding. Um, so definitely, if there's any type of an opportunity within the local community, whether it's a family event, maybe the dads do a meetup. How awesome would that be? There's been talk in our community of um, some of the dads wanting to organize a dad's kids camping thing or day camp. So I think that'd be awesome. I want a day off. Anyway, um, and then the last thing is the last um, possible technique you can use is n negotiate. Okay, so if your child is four right now, it's going to be five soon, they're just heading into prep or kindergarten. So maybe you could try out homeschooling just for one year and then review it on an annual basis. Well, we only want to do it for a year and then we'll see. The same thing goes with public schooling. Just because you sign the papers with the public school, this is not marriage. <laughs> It's not. So maybe it just becomes your thing is that every year, at either at the end of the school year or the beginning of the school year or whatever, that the family sits down and they have a conversation about how is educating going. And, um, and so, and you review it. And you wouldn't want to flip flop back and forth between schooling and homeschooling on a yearly basis because the lack of continuity, especially on the schooling side, would show. But definitely families do go back and forth a couple times to really find their groove and what's gonna work for them. So there's room within this conversation for negotiation and for everybody to feel heard and to feel valued in their fears and their concerns and to find that middle ground where everybody is uh, happy with the outcome, okay? If you're doing family meetings, there is gonna come a point with your child is old enough to participate and have a voice in this conversation. So as you're going down the road with the homeschooling, uh, be careful not to overlook that because um, it, it, they do have a voice in their own life and their education. Does this make sense to you? Are you? Do you see what I'm saying? So if you have any questions on what I've presented here, leave it in the comments below and take a look at this video over here where I'm sharing other experiences and information about how homeschooling has gone with me and I will see you in the next video.